Hi there, my name is Yi Zhu from MCDB 427 Molecular Biology at the University of Michigan. In this video, I'll be discussing Figure 1120 of our textbook, Molecular Biology, where Danny Reinberg and colleagues identify the phosphorylation target of transcription factor 2H, also known as TF2H. In the textbook, the figure has the title TF2H phosphorylates the CTD of RNA polymerase 2. But technically, the data I'll be showing you today focuses on identifying the target of phosphorylation rather than the kinase itself. Also, the authors were exploring the phosphorylation on a larger subunit of the RNA polymerase 2 complex, a protein called RPB1. This experiment is significant because it specifically demonstrates that the C-terminal domain CTD of protein RPB1 of the RNA polymerase 2 is the phosphorylation target of TF2H. Here's a brief table of contents. We'll be starting with a brief overview of the pre-initiation complex, followed by some background information and experimental setup. Then we'll be discussing the results together. Cool. Without further ado, let's get started. In order for transcription, the process of making RNA from DNA to initiate, a delicate pre-initiation complex has to be assembled. The complex is composed of both RNA polymerase the ipsofactor RNA synthesizing component and other proteins or complexes, termed general transcription factors. The study we are discussing today focuses on one of the transcription factors, transcription factor 2H. The assembly of the pre-initiation complex involves multiple transcription factors in a specific order, and TF2H is the last one in place. This whole process starts with the binding of TBP stands for TATA box binding protein as a subunit within TF2D. This is followed by the binding of TF2A and TF2B. Once RNA polymerase 2 and its associated TF2F are set in place, TF2E and finally TF2H will be recruited. And thus, we will have the complete pre-initiation complex. After this, phosphorylation on RNA polymerase will take place, and RNA synthesis will start. Here, I would like to tell you a little bit more about RNA polymerase 2. RNA polymerase 2 is a multi-protein complex with 12 subunits, and one of them is called RPB1, and will be the main focus of the study. RPB1 can also come in three different forms. The first one is a full-length protein, but unphosphorylated, and we'll call it form A. The second one in the middle that misses the C-terminal domain tail is called form B. And the third one to the right with full-length and phosphorylation is called form O. And similarly, the complete RNA polymerase 2 that possesses the corresponding forms of RPB1 are termed RNA polymerase 2A, RNA polymerase 2B, and RNA polymerase 2O correspondingly. These constructs allow the authors to further explore the phosphorylation of RPB1. Say for example, if they can get a phosphorylation of RNA polymerase 2A but not RNA polymerase 2B, it would suggest that the phosphorylation is on the C-terminal domain of RPB1, since the form 2B of RNA polymerase does not possess the C-terminal domain of protein RPB1. All right, at this point, you may be wondering what is actually phosphorylating the protein. Great question. Now we know that transcription factor 2H is essential for its two functions. One, it phosphorylates the RNA polymerase 2 complex of our protein RPB1. And two, it unwinds the double-stranded DNA molecule. And today, I'll be showing you data regarding the TF2H phosphorylating the C-terminal domain of protein RPB1 of the RNA polymerase 2. In the year of 1992, Dr. Danny Reinberg, professor at the University of Medicine and Dentistry of New Jersey, decided to find out more about the phosphorylation event mediated by TF2H. Previous data showed that RNA polymerase 2 was phosphorylated and TF2H contained the kinase. 
Then they wanted to know that if this phosphorylation happens at a protein RPB1, and if so, where is it specifically? Can it be on a C-terminal domain? So towards this end, they set up the experiments. The main assay they used in the study is called the in vitro phosphorylation assay. In this assay, you will reconstitute the phosphorylation reaction in the test tube, and thus in vitro. In this context, Reinberg and colleagues included radio label ATP, TF2H, and other assisting general transcription factors, and as well as different forms of RNA polymerase as a substrate. As a reminder, the 2A form of RNA polymerase does not have a phosphorylated RPB1. The 2B form of the RNA polymerase has a deletion of C-terminal domain of protein RPB1. And the 2O form of the RNA polymerase has the C-terminal domain of RPB1 hyperphosphorylated. And then the kinase in TF2H complex will transfer the radioactive phosphate from the radio-labeled ATP to its substrate. And as a result, any phosphorylated product will carry the radioactive phosphate. They will then run a gel and perform autoradiography to look for phosphorylation of protein RPB1. Since this is a huge protein, it will look into the part of the gel around 200 kilodalton. All right, with all the information in mind, we can step into the results. The first question Weinberg and colleagues were trying to answer was, is this phosphorylation happening on protein RPB1? For the panel A of figure 11.20, the first lane, the authors added no RNA polymerase 2. So it is no surprise that we see nothing phosphorylated that is the size of RPB1. Moving on to lane 2 to 4. Here, the authors had a 2A form of the RNA polymerase in an in vitro phosphorylation reaction. And as a reminder, the form 2A of the RNA polymerase contains the intact yet unphosphorylated protein RPB1. Also, identical scheme of reaction is used from lane 2 to 4. And the three lanes represent the progress of a time course. The bands you're seeing on this gel are radio labeled RPB1 protein which suggests that RPB1 is getting phosphorylated. Also, the bands run from where the A form of RPB1, the unphosphorylated, to the phosphorylated O form of RPB1, indicating that a population of different sizes of RPB1, that is, a different levels of phosphorylation of RPB1, are present. Then I would like to skip to lane A to 10 and authors used form 2O of RNA polymerase. And this contains the phosphorylated intact version of protein RPB1. And we can still see on the gel that there is a minor phosphorylation of RPB1. The 2O form of RNA polymerase did not have every potential phosphorylation site phosphorylated, so they could add more in this experiment. But this is not as many as with the 2A form and as you can see from the fainter bands. And this is consistent with their starting RNA polymerase 2O as being mostly phosphorylated. And lastly, in lane 5 to 7, the authors took use of the 2B form of the RNA polymerase to explore the specific location of phosphorylation. They introduced the 2B form of RNA polymerase, which processes the CTD truncation version of RPB1. And as a result, no phosphorylation event takes place. So, taken together, this panel indicates that protein RPB1 is a protein that is being phosphorylated by TF2H along with other assisting transcription factors. It also gives the clue that CTD might be the substrate for this TF2H mediated phosphorylation. The second question Reinberg and colleague were trying to answer was, is this phosphorylation happening at a C-terminal domain of RPB1? And to this end, they'll be using a specific enzyme, chymotrypsin, that will cleave the C-terminal domain off from the RPB1 of the RNA polymerase 2 complex. So for panel B of figure 11.20, the plus H in arrow here indicates that 
all three lanes will contain the list of general transcription factors and TF2H. In lane 1, it is a repeat of the previous experiment that when you add RNA polymerase to A, the form that contains the unphosphorylated form of protein RPB1, RPB1 will be found phosphorylated. And in lane 2 and 3, Reinberg and colleagues let phosphorylation experiment take place first with RNA polymerase to A. And then they added chymotrypsin, which will cleave the CT detail off from RPB1 and hence off from the polymerase too. And as you can see on the gel, the CTD is the component that was labeled with the radioactive phosphate, but not the rest of the RPB1. This indicates that it is in fact the C-terminal domain of protein RPB1 that is phosphorylated by TF2H with the aid from other transcription factors. In conclusion, in figure 11.20, Reinberg and colleagues showed that the C-terminal domain CTD of RPB1 of RNA polymerase 2 complex is phosphorylated by transcription factor 2H and along with other assistant transcription factors. Thank you for watching. I hope you will have a better understanding of the figure after seeing this video. Go Blue!